Hello and welcome to the FSOF recording on Transact version 4.5 user interface walkthrough for operators. My name is Eric Scott and I am one of the professional services consultants here at FSOF. The learning goals for this recording are to demonstrate and explain the various Transact user interfaces for operators so that by the end of the video, you will be able to confidently navigate through the different screens within the product. This includes the home and login screens, view my batches or batch list, document review, document validation, the floating left menu, and upload new documents. First, let's begin with the home screen. Transact can be accessed from all major browsers. Go ahead and enter in your custom URL in the address bar. If you are unsure of this information, please reach out to your IT department for more details on how to access. As you can see, the product is split into two separate categories, administrator and operator. In the upper right, this is a, a link to our wiki page where you can perform searches. Also along the bottom, we've got specific links here to wiki pages, documentation, and other links to our website. Let's select View My Batches. Here at the login screen, we can view the remaining volume of our licensing, and we can verify the version of Transact that we're operating. Enter in your username and password, and click the blue arrow button. On the batch list screen, there's a graph here on the left that shows us the number of batches in each queue. The review is used for verifying classification results, and validation is for confirming extraction results. Using these two buttons for review and validation, we can toggle back and forth between the separate queues. We can click on any one of these columns to sort our results by either ascending or descending. And this drop down arrow will let us access filters to filter our results. Along the bottom, if we had more than one page of results, we can use these arrows to navigate forward and back. We can refresh our display. We can change how many records are shown per page, and we can turn on our refresh interval to a predefined number of seconds. Let's select our batch and click open. In review, we'll be presented with the first document. The system either could not classify correctly or confidently based on the predefined threshold. In the document tree on the left-hand side, our current document is highlighted with blue and we use a red light, green light system to separate the different confidence levels across the documents. The documents are numbered and labeled by their document type. Across the top, we've got our review button, next batch, merge documents, split documents, and then under more at the bottom, we've got all the available shortcuts to you in the system. At the end of the video, I'll share a link to our wiki article which explains each of the shortcuts in further detail. Also in the middle, we've got specifics about the current batch that we're in, such as batch ID, the name, and priority, with the lower the number being the higher the priority. We've got our document type drop-down list, and then our document thumbnails. If we wanted to change this document type, we would just select a different option from the list and click Review. Also, if we wanted to split a document out, highlight the page where you want the new document to start, and either click split or control two. Confirm the prompt, and now we've got separate documents. On the flip side, if we wanted to combine those together, you can either go up here to merge, select the document that you want it to merge with, or we can use control forward slash. Confirm the prompt, and now we're back to a two page document. On the right hand side, we've got our full image display and our document toolbar. This can go over to the right side or back to the left. This will split the image very similar to what we did before by splitting the document. We can zoom in, zoom out, fit the image, rotate right, rotate left. This will go to the first page of the document, previous page, next page, last page of the document, and this OCR toggle allows you to look at the OCR results that the system read off of the image itself. So this is the, the separate text layer to the, the image. I click it again and we're back to the image. This overlay zoom I'll cover in validation. We can duplicate our image. This pop-out image gives you a full window display of your page. 
you can scroll up and down. When you're finished, close the window. And then you can also delete an image. Once we've made all of our necessary changes and reviewed all the documents, we'll be prompted to close the batch. And if there's a new batch in the system, it'll automatically open, or we can go to batch list or validate. Let's go to validate. Here in validation, we've got a similar layout to review. In the upper left, we can click this document page view to get a look at the thumbnails for an individual document. Click it again and we're back to our previous view. Again, we're gonna be presented with the first document that had a low OCR confidence score, or if a validation rule for a field wasn't met, or a required value may be missing, or the field could just be set to force review. On the right hand side, you can see where the system is highlighting on the page where the text was extracted. This next field is a date format, so we can choose a different date from the calendar if we wanted to. A good example of a validation rule would be to intentionally put an incorrect date in this field. You can see it turns red and we get a warning message forcing the user to put in a valid date before the document can be validated. If we need to add information to a field, we can either key it in or right click with your mouse on the image, draw a box around the data and right click again and it'll put that data right into the field. We can also select items from an option list. And as you can see across the top here, we've got data in separate tabs. So this tab is all the data that came off of this page itself. You could have a hidden tab where maybe there's additional data that you don't want an operator to review. Or this other tab is a database lookup that came from either invoice number or PO number. Once we've got the data all the way that we want and we've validated all of our documents, you can either click validate or control E to save. You'll be prompted to finish the batch. We'll hit okay. And the next batch in the queue will get loaded up. On the left hand side, we've got this floating left menu. This allows you to navigate to different areas of the product. Right now, let's look at upload batch. So the upload documents page is where we can manually create batches in addition to monitoring network folders, email accounts, and direct scanning. So we select our desired batch class from the drop-down list here, give it a description, and set our priority. You can either drag your files from the Explorer window onto this drag and drop files here box, or you can select the files and navigate out to the location. Select your files and click open. On the left hand side, we've got a dashboard that shows upload speed and some more specific details about the files in our upload session. We can delete files from this list if we want to, or we can click reset all to completely start over. Once you're finished getting your files loaded up, click the start batch button and the system will begin to build your batch and send it down the workflow. Here is the link to the wiki page for the shortcut keys. You can also just go to wiki.fsoft.com and search for shortcut keys. Thank you for watching the FSOft video on Transact 4.5 user interface walkthrough for operators. In this recording, we demonstrated and explained various Transact user interfaces for operators you should now be able to confidently navigate through the different areas within the product. Thank you.